Welcome back. Today we are going to be finishing off what we started last Thursday. We are going to be addressing the video made by BBC3 called Women on the Internet, or something like that. To do this, I am also bringing back the avatar used for the first part, made by Matt Winters, linked to his Instagram and Twitter below. Now the two remaining subjects and experiences from the individuals are mansplaining and trolling. This is going to be so much damn fun. Let's get into it. Just before these ladies explain what mansplaining is to them, I'm going to cut to a few of my friends who are going to give you the explanation or definition to them of what mansplaining is. So first up, Squeaky. Well, mansplaining is when a man has the goal to do something such as correct a woman. Now, or interrupt her. Now, you might be thinking, well, that sounds a bit obnoxious. I mean, obnoxious sounds like something that everybody does at some point happens to everybody you'd be right but you're not thinking like a perpetual victim because mansplaining is an issue for reasons that we can't quite elaborate without using some pseudo will bullshit but we have mansplaining and man interrupting and man slamming but we, we really don't hate men at all it's not at all a prerogative is it where the fuck would you get that from so, in short, mansplaining is basically just, it's just a bullshit term to try and win arguments very inefficiently. Thank you, Squeaky. Please go subscribe channel link below. Now let's see what these ladies think mansplaining is. Mansplaining. Oh. Mansplaining is just basically um, a man thinking he knows more mm. about what it's like to be a woman. Clearly you don't know what mansplaining is, and Squeaky's definition wasn't enough, so I'm going to now ask Mad Cat. What's mansplaining? A psychological need to protect one's fragile ego in light of ignorance on a topic. Basically, a woman doesn't want to admit that she doesn't know something, and instead tries to get a man to feel guilty to avoid facing her own ignorance. Or anything. <laughs> they just assume that you don't know what you're talking yeah. about. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, that's not even what the article said. And she was just kind of like, I wrote the article. Well, they do say third time's a charm, so I'm now going to ask Jason Brazil, a former Samage gentleman's gentleman. What's mansplaining? Mansplaining, or explaining while male, is the act of a man explaining something that a woman doesn't already know. And women think that any act of explaining by a man is condescending. Condescending means that someone is talking down to the other person, just in case you didn't know that. I have noticed that with the young ladies in this video, they are presuming that men are speaking down or making assumption. Now I'm not saying there aren't some people who don't do that, but that generalization and the way you present it is implying that all men do that. You're being very vague, and quite frankly, it doesn't make this at all informative. It makes it very easy for me to pull people off the internet to give you the definition of mansplaining, repeatedly. Even if you're talking about something like feminism or something of your own experience, a man will come along and be like, shh. You're talking about your period. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to what you. What a period. The is. I don't know if you know. Okay, so I'm going to give a scenario before we go to our fourth and final explanation from a friend for mansplaining. You say you have lived experience for working, for example, on a construction site. You have all this experience, lived experience, but you don't have the qualifications to be there. Do your lived experiences entitle you to being on that construction site when you are not qualified? I know it's not a very good example, but it's one of those instances where there is an obvious yes or no. Oh, and Jack, can you please tell me the definition of mansplaining? Mansplaining is nothing more than a man telling the woman the truth when she doesn't want to hear it. Here's an example. No princess. Having to buy your own stuff, such as tampons, is not oppression. It's called being an adult. Okay, cupcake? What I love about each of the definitions given for mansplaining, from Squeaky the First to Mad Cat to Jason Brazil to Jack Barnes, the amount of patience each person has goes down. The thing you have to understand about black people. Yeah. I have had my own jokes explained to me on Twitter. I can't really add much to the idea of talking about someone's race when they themselves are not a member of that particular skin colour. 
but I can give my two cents with regards to explaining someone else's joke. Firstly, you can't confirm that person's gender based on a profile picture, that's not enough. Second, and I see this happen all the time with some of my favourite content creators and even one obsessive friend, where context gets completely blown out of the water. You have 140 odd characters to work with. Trying to get a joke isn't always going to work, it depends though on the type of joke. Whether it be something simple, like telling someone their dog in a suit would look like a sceptic clone. It's pretty good, it works, it's funny, and accurate. Oh, I love trolling. To me, trolling, there is a subtle science, and a lot of people I've noticed very recently will say, trolling isn't as good as it once was. And I have to agree to a certain extent, because some will now just jump to the extremes to get the reaction. But it can be done through subtler methods. Liking chicks with dicks, for example. That quote nearly killed me. I feel like people think that Trolls are just people that say negative things, but there's a massive difference. Trolls can say positive or negative things. They can do both if they want, as long as they get you to the desired location where all has been revealed and done to you that has gotten the best reaction out of you. They go, I hope you die. I hope oh you my god, yeah, yeah, it's always, they, they it goes always straight just... to, um, I'm gonna rape you. Yeah. While not a troll, I do go out of my way to tell every male content creator on a live stream that I'm going to make love to them at some point. Note, I'm going to make love to them is completely different to rape them, because I'll at least buy them dinner first. That's not trolling, that's threat. If it's someone you don't know, you can block them. If it's someone you do know, you can simply tell them off, unless of course you found it funny. If someone tells me they're going to rape me, I'm probably going to laugh, and then say, tell me when shove it up your vagina, jump in a vat of acid. <laughs> Without context, these are just quotes that are somewhat amusing. Stick it in your vagina, stick what in your vagina? I'm assuming it's a fantastic place to hoard drugs, or kex, and jump in a vat of acid. If you want a fantastic skin peel, sure, do it. <laughs> The reason that you're mentally ill and have a fucked up sexual identity is probably because your dad died when you were really young. Ha ha ha. What? <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay. Abuse that I get online, I have no idea whether it's because I'm a woman or whether it's because I'm mm -hmm. black. The wonderful thing about the internet is it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter what your faith is, your sexual orientation, hell, your identity or expression. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter what you look like, you know, damaged face wise. The internet can sense stupidity and it is not exclusive to any one group. There are idiots literally, literally everywhere. It's something that we laugh about all the time, mm. but actually it's not, it's, it's really scary. There is a somewhat annoying aspect to the internet, and that is there are people who can't see a joke, they can't perceive sarcasm, either because they overcomplicate what they see on Twitter, or simply because they can't tell the difference in someone's voice, to notice when it is in fact a joke, or hell, they just don't get jokes. There's one person I've seen on Twitter do this a lot. For someone whose name is a play on curiosity, I find that to be fascinating. I'm not now saying there isn't trolling out there that doesn't cross a line. There is, of course there is. Everyone has a line. There is somewhat a societal norm for moral compasses. If that makes sense, please let me know. But I will say that if you find it scary that someone on the internet is making stupid remarks, that aren't explicit threats to you and your family, like, I'm gonna come to your house and fuck you up, I know where you live, nigger, then I would take it with a pinch of salt. Or, you go and report it to the necessary social networks admins. That person will then be blocked from you and most likely from the site. Hell, if the threats get too much, you go straight to the police. Although I do think you're just over-exaggerating for this annoying waste of TV license money. The free speech argument is... Oh! <laughs> the free speech argument does hold some merit. However, as most of the social media network companies are privately owned, they set the rules. Facebook do it, and they censor quite a lot. Recently, political leanings are the topical censoring. Twitter, exactly the same. 
Mine's not censoring, which is great because I have one. The list does go on, but the fact is, free speech and free expression, one's ability to be able to speak, they should. But if the company that owns the social media platform doesn't allow that, then so be it. It is their company. They do what they want with their company. Thank you all for listening. Thank you.